by a high wind, flames sweep through a pulpwood stockpile in Hull, Canada, across the river from the Dominion's capital city of Ottawa. Valuable machinery and tens of thousands of cords of wood are destroyed by the flame. Fire equipment from both cities plays streams of water on the 100-foot-high flames. Daylight reveals the extent of the damage to the big stockpile. The loss is increased when the flames reach the Alexandra Railroad Bridge. The terrific heat tears and twists the bridge and the heavy rails in one of Canada's most serious losses by fire. mile after mile in the state of Florida are the world's greatest phosphate mines, a vast source of agricultural fertilizer. Containing 50% of the world's supply, these mines are working at full capacity to provide fertilizer to help revitalize the farms of war-torn countries. A tremendous dredge digs up the rich phosphate deposits which lie only 10 to 15 feet below the surface. Eight to 10 million cubic yards will be excavated this year. Most of it will be used to enrich the crops so badly needed to prevent famine in Europe and Asia. On a railroad trestle, the phosphate in its crude form is carried to a large stockpile. Bulldozers push it into pits where it is transported underground on conveyor belts at the rate of 300 tons an hour. At the end of the belt line, the phosphate is loaded into cars for shipment abroad. The United Nations Security Council begins its second day of deliberations in New York City. The main issue is Iran's dispute with Russia. The Soviet's Ambassador Gromyko has asked postponement of the matter for two weeks. But Britain's Sir Alexander Cadogan is for immediate discussion, as are America's Stettinius and Burns. Poland's Dr. Langa has supported the Soviet motion. Iran has filed formal charges with the Council, and Ambassador Hassan Allah is present to present his case if the Council so decides. But Gromyko strongly objects. Данного корреспонденту американского телеграфного агентства Associated Press 19 марта сего года. В этом интервью, как известно, генерал Симус Сталин заявил о том, что он придает большое значение организации объединенных наций. Что позиция... Mr. Gromyko insists that there has been an understanding reached between the Soviet Union and the Iranian government. He makes a motion that the case therefore be eliminated from the agenda of the Security Council. Dr. Kuo of China, presiding, calls for a vote on Gromyko's motion. The Soviet delegate and Dr. Langa of Poland vote in favor, but by a show of nine hands to two, the Iranian protest is kept on the agenda. It has not been Gromyko then calls for a postponement of the hearing of Iran's case for two weeks. United States Secretary Burns insists that Iran is entitled to a hearing on the question of postponement. We must give them a chance to be heard. After we've heard them, after we've heard the representative of the Iranian government speaking for his government, if his statement does not appeal to us, then we can postpone. But to postpone without giving them a chance to be heard would be a violation of the spirit of the Charter. A Russian threat not to participate in the meetings if Iran is heard before April 10th is deplored by Delegate Van Kleffens of the Netherlands. A little disappointed that the delegate for the Soviet Union should have suggested that his government could not consent to a discussion before the 10th of April. Because I feel that if the Council thinks there should be a discussion, and I'm not entering into that question now because I want to see the representative of Iran sitting here at the table and hear what he says about this postponement, postponement question before I make up my mind. But if the council came to 
the conclusion that there should be a discussion, I do not think that any individual member should paralyze such action or announce in advance because that is a sort of pressure which I think is not quite a, the right thing, uh, that it would not take part. Uh, it is one of the things we have undertaken by joining this organization that we should cooperate and I think that is in strict conformity with the purposes and principles as they have been enunciated <coughs> in the beginning of the Charter. The next day the issue was still before the Council, a subcommittee having been unable to arrive at a compromise in the meantime. Gromico, Bonnet of France and Cadogan of Britain take their places. Trigby Lee, UNO Secretary General is present. In the front row again are the representatives of Iran. The argument proceeds as Egypt delegate Hassan brings up the rights of smaller nations. That the small countries today are waiting for your decision because we want to see the big powers respect the treaty obligations. We want the big powers to know that if an independent country does not want to have foreign troops stationed in, on its soil. The, 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 the big powers should comply to that. It is only in the light of these observations that I have moved the motion yesterday about uh, asking the representatives of Iran to come here to the bench and explain his case. The whole world is waiting for our decision today. Dr. Quo puts the motion for postponement. Motion for postponement until this April 10th. This is the climax of the, the meeting. the situation of the Iranian case. All those who are in favor of the Soviet representative's motion will please signify by raising their hands Again, the vote is nine to two against postponement. Two in favor, not carried. The Iranians get ready to present their case, and Ambassador Gromyko rises with the Russian delegation to leave the council table. But the meeting goes on. Next day, as Secretary of State Burns and the other delegates take their places, the attention of those present is called to the empty chair of the Soviet delegate. Iran's ambassador, Hassan Allah, urging United Nations action, continues the presentation of Iran's position. He regrets the absence of the Soviet delegation. I'm sorry that my Russian colleague is not here for in responding further to his request for postponement, I wish above all to be accurate and fair. And I would be happier if he were here to correct at first hand any misunderstanding on my part of the position of his government. It is of the utmost importance that the assurances regarding evacuation be clarified without delay. It is of the utmost importance that these assurances be communicated to this council in whose hands Iran has placed its case. The council adjourns to seek further information from the governments of both parties to the dispute.